Hello everyone, welcome to Anthropology Analytica. I'm Dr. Arjun Bopanna, your Anthropology faculty at Insights IAS. In this video, let us try to answer this particular question, sacred complex as a dimension of Indian civilization. So there are various concepts that were given um, by various anthropologists and sociologists in order to understand Indian society, Indian civilization. In paper two of anthropology, we discuss many of these concepts, whether it is sacred complex, whether it is a parochialization and universalization, uh, whether it is nature man spirit complex um, or, uh, you know, Sanskritization, etc. So basically, these are concepts in order to understand Indian civilization, Indian society and culture change that is occurring in Indian society and Indian civilization. In that context, in order to understand Indian civilization or Indian society, see, uh, let's just try to understand what is this Indian civilization? What is civilization? If you recollect uh, the civilizational school of thought or if you recollect Robert Redfield and his idea of civilization, so he says that civilization is made up of a combination of little and great tradition. Uh, it is no different with respect to Indian civilization also. Indian civilization also is made up of uh, great and uh, little tradition, right? In that great and little tradition, there are interaction that is going on, okay? And uh, this interaction, the flow of culture from great to little and little to great, and uh, uh, within that, there are certain centers, there are certain, uh, you know, uh, essential features, essential centers from where culture is diffusing. And these are centers from where culture from different parts of uh, India, that is different little traditions is coming into. Okay, so in that context, okay, to elaborate it much more, um, L.P. Vaidyarthi came up with this concept of sacred complex. So this is the context. So having understood that concept, let's try to break down the structure of this particular question. So sacred complex as a dimension of Indian civilization, you will have to uh, write down the following and you'll have to mention the following things. One, uh, L.P. Vaidyarthi and where did he, when did he or why, how did he come up with this concept of sacred complex in his book, Sacred Complex of Hindu Gaya. Okay, L.P. Vaidyarthi uh, comes up with this concept of sacred complex and uh, he used this as a theoretical proposition uh, in the city of, uh, in the sacred city of Gaya uh, in the in ancient cultural zone of Magad. So he says that sacred complex reflects a level of continuity, compromise and a combination between great and little tradition. So that will be your context introduction. And so you will have to write about a three to four sentence of introduction. So L.P. Vaidyarthi, his book, Sacred Complex of Hindu Gaya and his study among the sacred city of Gaya in the ancient cultural zone of Magad. And then how he says that sacred complex, why, why, what it is. It's a reflection of continuity, compromise and a combination between great and little tradition. So you have entire India, you have uh, certain great uh, traditions and uh, little traditions all around uh, it. And then you have the sacred complex. So this sacred complex represents a degree of continuity and compromise and a combination between great and little traditions. Like these sacred places, uh, like Tirupati, Haridwar, uh, Varanasi, etc. So where people from all over the country comes, brings in their culture and takes back with them a piece of great tradition, right? So that is what is this whole idea of sacred complex and that is why it is important to understand it, okay, importance of understanding it to understand Indian civilization. Further, he developed it as an analytical concept and a descriptive term to describe the sacred city of Indian civilization. And he says that even though he has used it to explain Indian society and Indian civilization, but equally it can be used to understand every other sacred place, not only in Hindu society or Hindu civilization, but even outside. So it can be used for sacred, uh, you know, uh, complex of uh, Christianity, Islam, Mecca, uh, Medina, these have been used to explain uh, the um, Islamic civilization, etc. 
so further then you go on to explain so that is your three to four sentences or more actually you can explain a little bit more on the introduction part itself and then you go on to explain his analytical uh, concept so basically what does he do he tries to describe this concept of sacred complex in three dimensions in three analytical concept right so three analytical concept that is uh, your uh, sacred geography sacred uh, specialist and your uh, sacred performance so he says that the sacred complex is made up of uh, these uh, three analytical uh, or three uh, concepts of uh, geography specialists and performance so then he goes on to explain what is that sacred geography so you'll have to dedicate about uh, uh, two para on each uh, of sacred geography what it is so sacred geography called it also as sacred shetra made up of uh, uh, sacred zones segment and sacred cluster and sacred center then draw a diagram uh, uh, of um, uh, you know sacred geography and how he tries to explain that and uh, further you also have to dedicate one paragraph on the significance of it because here we are trying to understand it from the understand uh, from the dimension of indian civilization so sacred geography is a meeting place for people's belief system and practices when uh, you know uh, in the ancient time so people from all over india okay uh, when there was no concept of india or there was no nation uh, called as india even the those time people from all over the uh, country came in and uh, it exhibited a combination of uh, different tradition and brought unity into bharata varsha so once you have uh, completed with writing about sacred geography next you will have to start writing about sacred specialist so who are these sacred specialists so they um, are individuals who live in the sacred uh, complex or sacred geography and they maintain a very distinct lifestyle and they perform sacred ritual through these performances they are the primary source of transmitting primary source of transmitting tradition so they play a very important role in trying to bring about uh, you know a kind of a combination and continuity and a compromise between great tradition and little tradition so they are the source of primarily transmitting tradition uh, from generation to generation and uh, through this uh, they are making people aware of uh, great and little tradition and in his study uh, in various uh, sacred uh, geographies okay like rishikesh dwarka uh, bhuvaneshwar puri uh, lp vaidyarthi brought out the economic and psychological aspects of uh, various brahmin priests and the uh, pilgrims okay so uh, he says that there are different kinds of specialists so you have uh, sanskritized brahmins then you have feudalistic aristocratic classes then you have proletariats uh, who have uh, developed uh, different kinds of rituals over a period of time and he also says that these sacred specialists are not just restricted to great tradition but you also have specialists from little tradition and finally you'll be talking about the sacred performances so these sacred performances varies from one geography to another so uh, for example lp vaidyarthi studied uh, gaya shraddha the funeral rituals uh, you know involving elaborate sacrifices so uh, these performances that are performed in the sacred geography are then uh, transmitted to all other parts of india and it is followed across india so when pilgrims comes to the sacred geography they learn the sacred performances from sacred specialists go back and take these things uh, and then later perform it in their own houses and then when uh, they come to back come back to the sacred geography they bring along with them little tradition so this is what is leading to integration of uh, little and great tradition and the formation of civilization uh, so this way this is the significance of uh, these three concepts geography specialist and performance so in your answer after the introduction after the context you will explain about sacred geography sacred specialists and sacred performances and uh, while doing so you'll also write the significance of each of them like how sacred geography helps in bringing people together from different parts of country sacred specialists so who play a role of transmitting these culture and sacred performances which help uh, which are transmitted across the parts of india and uh, this way uh, you know they all uh, lead to a, a, a unish uh, you know a transmission of culture and an integration of great and little 
tradition. So also make sure that you give examples and draw flowcharts to explain this network of relationship. Uh, and then if a question demands, you can also con uh, write about the concept, I mean, critical aspect of it. For example, it was ethnocentric, uh, considering that only the, uh, you know, the great traditional parts are considered to be sacred and the rest are not. Or uh, another criticism is that it focused mainly on Hindu aspects and Hindu uh, civilization, etc. So in the conclusion, May, you can talk about the criticism of this concept of sacred geography. You can also ex uh, in a conclusion write that how this concept was uh, further developed by others like uh, Saraswati, uh, Jha, uh, even Marriott and Khan have developed this concept further. Uh, to con talk about what is known as a network and centers etc saraswati for example has done studies on holy circuit of nimsa temple organization of goa and even in kashi he has done his studies so this way uh, you will be able to conclude giving the legacy of sacred complex uh, so this is the answer for this particular topic that is sacred complex as a dimension of indian civilization i hope this uh, video was useful in the next video let us try to understand this another topic critically examine the concept of tribe caste continuum and its relevance in contemporary india thank you for watching